Just why did the communist regime in Russia fail? We're gonna find out on today's BFD. Some people like to think of history as being set in stone, but that's simply not the case. Two historians can have absolutely differing viewpoints about the same event in history, and the fascinating thing is, both can be equally as valid. To prove this point, let's take a somewhat recent event in history, like the fall of the USSR. Then let's take two history professors and ask them both the same question. Why did communism fall? The history of communism in the Eastern Bloc is a history of an attempt to contain people's desires for American stuff. The commissars of the Eastern Bloc couldn't keep things like jazz and rock and roll and Levi's out for very long. The people wanted those things. They did not want to be surrounded by our military, but they did want Bruce Springsteen. They said that jazz music would end the Soviet Union, and they were right. Overwhelmingly, it was an internal process, right? It had to do with their economic and also their ideological problems. It had to do with Gorbachev, a bold reformer who probably took too many chances. He tinkered with the system and brought it down. All that was mostly internal. So we have two differing takes on, on basically the same event and what caused the end of the Cold War. Where can we find common ground? Robert Thaddeus, thank you guys so much for joining us. Let's sure. get right down to it. Let me say something at the outset. Sure. Because I think a lot of listeners, a lot of viewers might have been expecting a larger contrast because they're used to the sort of conventional wisdom. The real answer is that we spent them into the ground, right? Reagan launched a new arms race, MX missiles, all the rest, Star Wars. They tried to keep up. They went bankrupt. They had no choice but to capitulate. Among serious specialists, historians, scholars of international relations, that is not widely taught, is not widely believed anymore. And the real answer lies in these subtleties and these differences we're going to explore here. Because I have no uh, dispute with all these forces, these desires, and in a sense, the kind of spiritual rottenness of the official order and the allure of what the West offered. Inevitably, at some point, that would have brought the system down. Where I argue is, when would it have brought the system down? And my counterfactual is that absent Gorbachev, this unusual, liberal, risk-taking, experimental, and everything else that he was leader, absolutely you know, foreign to his own country in outlook and mentality and behavior. Without him, maybe the old system could have gone on 20, 30 more years. So, so but, but I, I'd ask you, as a, as a sort of rebuttal, would you say Gorbachev or Elvis Presley was more important in the, uh, in the fall of communism? The king, of course. Okay. Right? <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think Gorbachev, I mean, we're trained as historians not to deal with counterfactuals <laughs> because they didn't happen. So we can't actually a analyze something that ha didn't happen. I mean, I think that G in Gorbachev's mind, though, was that if he had forestalled the liberalization process, the revolution that ended up happening would have been an ugly and violent one. We agree that hard power doesn't work, that it's soft power, cultural attraction, persuasion, um, music, right. what have you. What I think is far more powerful is the very, very soft power, like popular culture, right? The stuff that appeals directly to people's desires. How do you square uh, the invasion of Iraq with the Arab Spring? Because I, 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 I've heard that argument that like, oh no, we invaded Iraq, and so that's how the Arab Spring took hold. If you no. go to any city in the Middle East now, and look on top of the apartment buildings, you will see dozens and dozens of satellite, satellite dishes, dishes streaming in the worst of Western culture, right? And the mullahs are just like Stalin in this. They know, they have said, this will end radical Islamic power. That's why they issue fatwas every single day against things like Mickey Mouse and Madonna and Britney Spears and Western style shorts, et cetera, right? And so the censorship of Mubarak was chafing at people. And he was censoring sexy music videos. That was one of his great, you know, programs. Was and of course, people hated it. I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to join us today and to, uh, to explore a little bit of history and to give us your take on it. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So there you have it. These are two particularly well-informed opinions on exactly the same historical event. And the thing is, there's a lot of other historians out there with their own takes. Interested in making a little history of your own? Well, click the link in the description below to help preserve Civil War sites and stories. And write yourself into the annals of YouTube history by subscribing to our show. For BFD, I'm David Park.